I've been revisiting a lot of manga from my past. It's interesting how different I feel towards these works after having not read or even thought about them for like 15 to 20 years. Seinin was something that always spoke to me, even when I couldn't fully understand the scope of the story. I was 13 when I started reading Siguatera, and it was eh for me. It seemed so mundane and the plot was way over my head at that time. But the beauty of manga is coming back to a story and giving it another shot after having experienced a bit of life, love, and loss. Today, I now understand how important this manga was in the development of the modern slice of life genre and can appreciate what the author was trying to say all those years ago. Yusuke Ojino is a 17 year old dweeb who constantly gets bullied. He distracts himself with a developing love of motorcycles. His friend, Takai Taiko, is also roped into this love of bikes and the bullying. We follow these two as they discreetly earn their motorcycle licenses, think about girls, and do their best to survive harassment. The early parts of this manga explore how teenagers deal with excessive bullying and the effects that it has on all sides. The bully, Taniwaki, doesn't seem like a bad guy. He views his harassment of Ojino as a one-sided friendship and even introduces his girlfriend, Akiko, to Ojino and they become very friendly. The fact that Taniwaki has such a carefree attitude despite his downtrodden life is in direct opposition to Ojino's neurotic and annoying persona, despite how relatively great things are for him. Authored by Minoru Furuya, Siguatera explores these characters' lives over the closing years of high school and the beginning of adulthood. A lot like his previous work Himizu, the introduction of A1 girlfriends that for some reason fall head over heels for the gamma male adds a sense of relatability for some readers. I've dated way out of my league before and I did struggle with the anxiety of my partners getting hit on by other guys, wondering what they see in me and a lot of other insecurities. And just like Ojino, I've lost sight of the great things going for me in my life, instead focusing on one or two negative aspects or people and letting that consume me. Ojino earns his motorcycle license and gets his first vehicle, and we see him stretch out as a young man. His relationship with his now serious girlfriend, Nagumo, deepens, and he becomes more confident and starts standing up for himself. The people who come and go in his life sometimes have a huge impact on the overall plot, but most of the time, these are just passing moments. This has been a common complaint from readers for many of Furuya's works, and I can see why it would bother some. Having so much commitment to a minor character in a short-run manga can lead to dissatisfaction at the completion of the story, especially when this character never reappears again. But another way you can look at it is to think of real life. Weren't there co-workers at your retail job who just one day quit or got fired? How many of our childhood friends moved away one day with no warning, bumping into old acquaintances you've lost contact with, only to drift apart again? That is what adulthood is. I've always gotten a strong autobiographical vibe from Furuya's works. The way he draws Ojino's face, sharpening his features over time feels reflective of how adolescent males determine their own entry into adulthood. The girlfriends of this manga are all interchangeable. Visually, they look the same and their personalities reside at different points on a shared spectrum. I think Furuya put his wife into his work often during this time. Siguatera's release isn't too far removed from when he became a father and you see that passion and overprotectiveness that a new father has radiate from his male characters whenever they think of or engage in conversation with their partners. Siguatera is a classic for seinen enthusiasts for a reason. This manga influenced complex slice of life, but it isn't a slice of life manga itself. A played straight romance that will remind you of your first serious relationship and all the challenges that came with it. The reader gets a story that is hard to love, but characters that they'll adore. And truthfully, I think this is a manga that finishes a lot stronger than when it starts. 
I was never bored with Ciguatera, but the middle volumes aren't as gripping and it's hard to connect to a fly-by-night supporting cast. And the topic of commitment in a relationship becomes the villain of the second half. So if emotional tension and internal monologues about should I fuck her, is this cheating, what is consent, don't do it for you, it may lose your interest. But the ending is so rewarding and heartfelt that you'll feel so grateful for toughing it all out. And once the I get it realization dawns on you after the manga's end, well, that's what Furuya's style is all about. If you're into slice of life, psychological drama, or mature romance stories, you'll dig Ciguatera. This is a 7 out of 10.